Welcome back to the Pillarworks channel. My name is John, and this is a big hunk of wood I picked up after Hurricane Irma hit in 2017. I've had it drying for almost three years, and I thought it would be fun to turn a bowl on the lathe. When I first picked this and a few other pieces up, they were on the side of the road for an uncertain amount of time. I got them home and painted the ends to seal them, which should slow the drying process and reduce cracking. I still got a fair amount of cracking anyway, but nothing too crazy. I marked the section I wanted to use and cut it up at the bandsaw. Then I flattened the face at the joiner and marked out a circle that would be my bowl blank, which was around 8 inches in diameter. Then I went back to the bandsaw to cut it out. Next time, I'll be more careful cutting this out because any deviations from your lines end up making things difficult when truing up the blank on the lathe. I filled some of the cracks with tinted epoxy, and for small fills like this, a little bottle with a precision tip is really useful to prevent excess epoxy from getting everywhere. Once the epoxy cured, and I had time to sleep on the fact that I hadn't turned a bowl in over 5 years, I decided to cut the blank in half so that it would be more manageable to turn. This ended up being a great decision because I don't think my tools would have been able to hollow out a 7 inch deep bowl. I drilled a pilot hole in the blank so that I could attach it to the wormwood screw installed in my chuck. Now all that was left to do was um, the, the turning part. You can see some of the wobble which is mostly from my imprecise bandsaw cutting, and I'm using carbide tools I bought from Simple Wood Turning Tools. It was a set that came with one handle and three different cutting heads. They're held in place with a couple of set screws, and it's simple enough to swap them out as you need to. Eventually, I'll probably get extra handles though because I think the idea of stopping to swap cutters made me less likely to actually do it when necessary, if that makes sense. Anyway, I got started truing up the blank into an actual cylinder, then shaping the outside of the bowl. I don't know if there are bowl shape names in the turning community, but I would classify this one as very basic bowl shape, with a hint of cereal bowl shape thrown in there. I initially had the lathe on its slowest speed, which was something in the area of 400 RPM. My lathe is variable speed in the same way that a bicycle is. You have to manually change the belt to different pulleys, which makes it a bit annoying to find the right speed for the job. I started slow and worked my way up as I got more comfortable with how the wood was cutting. I was having trouble accessing the end of the bowl because of the lathe extension and the long table that it's sitting on, so I decided to switch things up and put the lathe on this stand right here. This stand was purpose-built for my lathe. It's one of the first projects I ever made and it was the first time I followed a set of plans. Those plans were from one of the wood magazines, and I'll try to find them if I can and link them below. It was initially supposed to be a carver's bench with a swing out chair, and I think it had a little vise on it, but I kind of modified it just to be a stand for my lathe. It's a solid top right here, and then the base is three pieces with two piano hinges so that it can be taken apart and folded up if you need to store it somewhere. There's some complicated joinery on the underside that I added for I don't know what reason, there's like a separate mortise and dowel for each corner, and it was really complicated and over-engineered. This top has expanded because it's the summer and it's really humid right now in South Florida, so this was a pain to get on here. I really had to pound it with the mallet, and I may have ruined some of the interior mortises here, but that's okay. When it's winter again, I'll uh, reassess and see if I can fix those. But uh, yeah, let's get back to it. I found a write-up of the bench plans on Popular Woodworking, though for some reason I think the actual article was in a different magazine. Either way, the page is linked in the description below, and reading over those plans, I wasn't the one that added that joinery, it was just a part of the plans, but I still think it's a bit over-engineered. Nonetheless, it was a useful project and has been a great little stand for my lathe, joiner, and bandsaw over the years. I used a square roughing tool to cut a mortise or recess that the chuck can hold onto when I hollow the inside. After a little bit more shaping, I can then move to sanding. I had a pretty decent tool finish on the outside of this bowl, so I started at 150 grit and worked up to 320. I added a coat of walnut oil, and the figure in this wood just came to life. I'm not sure what type of wood this is, but this piece in particular is really, really nice. With the outside done, I can flip the bowl around and tighten the chuck in the recess I just cut. I used a 3 8 inch drill bit and the Jacobs chuck to drill a marker for the depth of the bowl. From there, I started to hollow it out. This whole thing went better than I was expecting. This lathe was the first woodworking tool I ever purchased. I started out like most, making pens and small items. I even tried a chess set, but after making five of the pawns and seeing slight deviations in their shape, 
I got frustrated and kind of just lost interest. I turned maybe five or so small bowls, but never got good at it. I mention this because if you have a lathe or want to get one, turning a bowl like this is very doable and not quite as intimidating as it can seem. I will say though that I really need a curved or bowl tool rest. I was having trouble maintaining leverage on the tool when reaching for certain parts of the bowl. The tool rest is straight and can't give me access to all parts of the bowl, and because of this, in addition to me being rusty, the tool finish on the inside was nothing to be desired. I started sanding at 80 and worked my way up. The inside still has some tool marks and a few ridges, but hey, I'll get better next time. I added some more walnut oil and watched the rest of the grain come alive. This walnut oil is actually made and sold by Mike Mahoney, who is an amazing bowl turner. I've been using the oil for a while now, and it's funny that I'm just now using it on a turned piece. I'll have an affiliate link in the description below if you're interested. It's a really nice finish, pretty light duty, and also food safe. With the bowl done, I popped it off the chuck, recovered the lathe and shavings, and got ready for some glamour shots. I've always looked at turning as its own defined subset of woodworking. It's this unique skill that is both easy to be okay at, but really hard to be great at. I say that because I consider this stepping a bit out of my comfort zone. It's fun to do that every now and again. Projects like this can kind of clear your head and just be for the fun of it. I have a decent stack of similar hurricane wood just waiting to be turned and I'm hoping to branch out a little bit more, maybe some leather work if I can find the time. Anyway, if you enjoyed this project and want to see things like this while they're in progress, follow me on Instagram at Perlworks. Thanks for watching.